The following KQED production was produced in high definition. My name is Barbara Block. I'm a professor at Stanford University, and I work on tunas. I'm also from the Tuna Research and Conservation Center, a collaboration with Monterey Bay Aquarium and Stanford University. There's over 25,000 species of fish, but only a handful are warm-bodied, and tunas are unique for their warm-blooded metabolism. That is, they can keep their body temperatures warm like a mammal or bird, and they've got a remarkable body shape, that sort of slender, bullet-shaped animal that allows them to be very efficient as they course through the ocean. Now we have tunas in captivity, and we're finally measuring basic biological parameters that for an animal that's the most sought-after animal on this planet in the ocean, it's about time we started learning some of the basic facts about how it works. How is it efficient as a swimmer? How is it consuming energy? And how does the animal as a warm-bodied, rare fish work? What we can do is we can actually put a tuna in a treadmill. And our treadmill isn't the kind of treadmill that you go walking on in the gym or walking on at home. This is a flume. We're keeping the animal sealed up in the container so we can measure how much oxygen the tuna extracts with its gills from the water. By measuring the oxygen, we can actually convert that to calories. We can actually indirectly then measure how much energy it costs every day to be a tuna. And for every sweep of that tuna's tail, what does it cost to swim in that flume? By doing that, we then can compare the tuna to other animals and find out, sure enough, that that sleek shape of the tuna is a very efficient shape in terms of its metabolic cost. We can actually figure out how much energy the tuna consumes and where it is in comparison to other animals on Earth. What we found is that the tuna, with its high metabolism to keep warm, is actually a bit like a Ferrari and not like a Volkswagen. So some fish are out there traveling the world's oceans just like a Volkswagen. Nice and easy, very fuel efficient. Tunas, they're actually really revved up, going from one stop to the next, but burning a lot of fuel along the way. That fuel helps heat up their muscles, and what the tuna gets as an advantage is sort of an energy speculator. It can go a little faster between the places it's looking to go at. So it's a strategy that's very much a high energy strategy. So a tuna can actually course through the global oceans and go from one side of the ocean to the next in less than about nine days. So they are the Olympians of the sea. They're actually the world's best migrators. That is, they can move very quickly and efficiently with a very unique form of swimming. We call it tuna form swimming. So they have a stiff body shape and they just wag the tail. And that allows them to actually keep a very nice fluid dimension as they go through the water. They don't actually have a lot of drag and they use vorticity as they swim. So as we see tunas moving through the aquarium, what we'll see is they're getting lift from their uh, pectoral fins. And as they get lift, they actually then use their tail to sort of wag. And what we see is a very stiff animal with just a little movement at the tail. So it's really a dolphin flipped sideways. Now that's a pretty high level of mechanical advantage that the tuna has. And there are folks who are designing AUVs, automated vehicles that go under the sea that look just like tunas. That is, we as a human designer haven't made a system as efficient as a tuna moving through the sea. So bluefin tuna is perhaps the most sought after animal on this planet right now. You can send your kid to college, such as Stanford, on catching one bluefin tuna. That is, it's worth about $45,000 if you have a big giant bluefin tuna and you sell it on the market. Where's it all going? Pretty much to one nation, Japan. So it's a fad. People like to eat raw tuna, sashimi. Many of us like to eat sashimi too. The globalization of tuna as a raw fish product around the world as a luxury item is actually leading to the demise of bluefin in the open sea. So we've hit a critical time in human history. More fish have been taken from the sea over the past 50 years than ever before. And the populations of tunas, cod, a variety of animals is now hitting a critical point where it's not clear that the fish in the sea can sustain this human pressure. So we're at a point now as ecologists, as oceanographers, as biologists, and as general consumers, where we're working hard to make people more aware of what they eat, more aware of that tuna in the fish market, more aware of where did it come from and what population are you taking this piece of meat from. And I think that what we have to do is become more aware as 
consumers that it isn't a bountyless ocean out there, that these are wild animals, and that these wild animals actually have a limit on their populations that we can actually over harvest. So what we hope is that some of our work, uh, along with the modeling that we're doing, will help to lead to a better understanding of how it is that we manage these fish for the future and that we as humans, through our interaction of just knowing more about the animal, will actually protect it because they're beautiful animals. They have enormous color and beauty of form when they swim and they're nothing like the tuna that we see in the can. These are living machines that are spectacular in their, their warmth, their body uh, motion and their capacity to swim across ocean bases. Keep Quest free. Discover more and donate at kqed.org quest.